want to say hi? Okay, say hi. Oh wait, here we go. One second. Okay, and this is why mommy lifts weights. Hey y'all, happy Thursday. I get asked a lot about, hey, if I am currently eating to lose weight or to burn body fat, so obviously you're having less calories than you normally do, how do you still have fun with your food, maybe with some drinks? So today it's Mommy Lars and Leif Day, so I will be with the boys, say hi! So I wanna show you how I can structure my food with being home with them, and then how I can plan to have a cocktail tonight. So I'm at home all day with the boys, so I'm gonna go out with a neighbor tonight and we're gonna have cocktails. I wanna show you how you can build that cocktail in first so you can look forward to it for the day, and how you can also have foods during the day to keep up if you have some busy toddlers or kids that just keep you going where you need to stay nice and energized. So let me show you how. So first thing I like to do, I make sure that I stay in the calorie amount that is set right now for my fat loss phase is build that cocktail in first because that's what I'm really looking forward to today. The other stuff I don't really care about as far as eating goes, I'm gonna eat more for what we like to call sustenance. So these are single ingredient foods, they're high volume proteins, high volume vegetables, basically stuff to keep me fuller longer and to keep my calories lower. So. Paul's running around right now with the little guys. But anyway, so I'm gonna build that cocktail in first. And you can say, give or take, most cocktails are about 200 calories. And so I go into something like my fitness pal and I build out that first. And so then I know if I'm only eating 1400 calories right now to lose weight, 200 of them I am gonna save for that cocktail later so I can really, really enjoy it. And then I know I'm gonna be able to stay on my plan easier. Then I'm just gonna start reverse engineering my day. I'll put in what I think I'm gonna eat for lunch, what I'm gonna eat for dinner, what I'm gonna eat for snacks, and then I'll stay in my calorie ceiling set for fat loss, and I'm gonna feel really good because not only did I totally crush my plan, but I was able to go out and enjoy time with girlfriends and a really delicious cocktail. So, I'm gonna show you what this day is gonna look like. All right, so we just wrapped up having some morning games and some songs. I was a preschool teacher for about five years. So yes, I actually love playing games and doing songs. Not all the time. Like right now, we're taking our little break before we go on our walk. So they're watching uh, Dinosaur Train, I think right now. They're really into dinosaurs. So while they do that, I'm gonna plan out my day as far as food goes. So I've got my fitness pal pulled up and ready to go. And what I wanna do is first change my goals because I'm in this fat loss phase and I just got a message from my coach and so he has changed my numbers. We're dropping them slightly because I kind of plateaued at the number that I was. So if you're at a plateau, you either have to eat less calories calories or you have to burn more. So we're dropping my calories so I can keep on losing. So I'm gonna go change my goals real quick. He is switching me up to 45 grams fat. So I'm gonna change that in my fitness pal. And then, ooh, my carbs are going down to 80 grams. Do you guys know how quickly I will go through 80 grams? So I'm gonna get super strategic with what I'm gonna eat and I'm probably gonna choose a lot of high volume vegetables that are super low carb to fill me up and then really work to build in some other carbs that I will enjoy because there is no plan I'm gonna do to get leaner if I don't actually enjoy it. Okay, now. So first thing, I got my goals ready to go. Second thing I need to do is build in what I really, really wanna look forward to today because any plan will be way easier to stay on if you actually build something in to look forward to. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that cocktail in because my neighbor Madison and I are gonna go have a little mommy's night out this Thursday, today, and I wanna make sure I can put that cocktail in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assume it's 200 calories. Do I really know that? Not really, because every mixer might be different. Maybe you know some of them have some extra add-ins to the cocktails, but you can kind of just bank on them being about 200 calories calories, and as long as you're consistent with the way you track it, that's what matters most. Now, in my fitness pal, rather than going to look for the type of cocktail, you'll want to input it in a way where it actually takes away some of your carbs and maybe your fats, and so then you know what you have left to work with as far as your calories go. So I'm going to go ahead and add it as a quick add. So there's a feature in here that says quick add. I don't know if that is only on the premium, which I have, because 
I really like to be as accurate as possible so I can enjoy every single ounce of my food. So I'm gonna say, okay, 200 calories, I'm gonna go ahead and put about 12 grams of my fat towards that, so that'll equal 108. So now I have 92 other calories to play with to get up to 200. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put in 24 grams, oh actually 23 grams carbs hits me right at 200. So now, left to play with for food outside of that cocktail, because that's what I wanted to work in first, is 57 grams carbs, 33 fat, and 100 grams protein. Okay, so I know I built in something to enjoy. The second thing I would recommend if you are following macros right now, whether it's trying to maintain weight or to lose weight, hit your protein. If you can stay in your calorie window while hitting your protein, you're gonna lose weight no matter what. It doesn't matter what you eat or what you drink. So here comes Lars. I'm gonna build out my day. I'm gonna hit all my protein sources, put in some single ingredient foods to keep me full and energized. Wait, here he comes and I'll show you what that looks like. So we're gonna try pork tenderloin in the Instant Pot today. <laughs> I have one behind the camera, see? So I already took the pork tenderloin out of the package. All right, you hold the seasoning. He's gonna shake, shake, shake. I cut it into like chunks about this big just so I can sear it in the Instant Pot. So while I was preparing it, I went ahead and I turned on the Instant Pot to the saute function. I'm gonna use cooking spray, put it in there. We're gonna season it up, Leif's gonna help me, and then we're gonna sear it on all sides. So I'm gonna do it more like a barbecue style. Okay, hold on, you gotta hold it up. We're gonna use Grill Mate's Mesquite today. Leif and I already seasoned it up. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in, you ready? All right, ooh, hear that sizzle? So we're trying out shredded pork tenderloin in the Instant Pot. So we cut it in big chunks, right? And then we seasoned it with a mesquite rub. Uh, but mommy's gonna hold that. And now I'm gonna sear it on all sides. Here, you hold this, okay? You hold that. Good, okay. And once we're done with that, I'm gonna add a half a cup of Diet Dr. Pepper. I used to make this recipe back in the day that was pork butt in the slow cooker with, uh, I think it was A&W root beer or some type of root beer, and it was so good. So I'm gonna recreate that in the Instant Pot and see how it goes. So I'm gonna sear this up, and then I'll show you how long I'm gonna so I'm just kind of flipping these around. According to the recipe, it wants me to get a really good sear on it, just probably to lock the juices in. That's typically why they have you do that with certain types of meats. I'm not getting too crazy with it, but you can see it's already starting to change colors, so that's gonna help sear it and lock it in. And then I am gonna add the Dr. Pepper, so let me show you that in a second, and close it up. And we're gonna go for two hours, so I'm gonna set it on manual for two hours, and then a 10 minute release once that's done. And we'll see uh, how it turns out as far as shredded pork goes. Remember, pork tenderloin, so I'm trying to keep it nice and lean and keep the protein high. And I'm gonna use the Instant Pot to see if I can actually keep that tender. I seasoned it with the Grill Mate's Mesquite to give it like a barbecue flair. And then for the liquid, rather than water or chicken stock, I'm gonna use Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. By the way, if you're a diet soda fan, this one and the, the one with cream soda, one of my friends introduced me to, it is really good. It tastes just like the real thing. Okay, so we're looking good there. I'm gonna go ahead and add my half cup. Well, it smells good already. All right, to give you an idea, that covers like the bottom perfectly. I don't know if you can really see the liquid, but it's all right. Yeah, it's got a nice little bubble. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna lock the lid. Make sure my valve is sealed. And now, since I had it on saute, I'm gonna switch it to manual. And then, you know what I'm gonna do? Manual, and I'm gonna go for two hours. Let's see if it goes faster, here we go. I've never done something in the Instant Pot this long. We're almost there. Boom, okay. So, as soon as it's done, I think I'm gonna go 10 minutes on the slow release, then I'll pop the valve, and we'll see if it's nice and shredded. This would be a great staple food to have on hand. All right, the pork tenderloin, shredded pork tenderloin is done. So, I already opened it up, I just let it slow release, and I kid you not, like I could barely pick it up, it was just shredding, coming right out of here. And look at that, 
you can still tell that it's nice and tender. And there's been recipes I've made in the past with pork tenderloin in the slow cooker that it just dries it out. And if it's dried out, kind of like chicken breast, and it's not palatable, you don't want to eat it. So I'm always looking for ways to make different staple foods or proteins that are easy to make, so I don't want to spend hours in the kitchen, that taste good, so they're palatable and enjoyable, meaning I want to eat them over and over again, and that it's readily accessible. So all I had to do was go buy the pork tenderloin, season it up, if you're not a fan of barbecue rub, choose whatever spices you like. Maybe salt and pepper, maybe Italian rub. I used the Diet Dr. Pepper today because I was trying to go for more of a barbecue, like sweet flavor, but maybe you want to keep it simple and just do water or chicken stock. And what I love about this too is that a lot of times I'll hear I have picky eaters in families. So I say prep ingredients, right? Not meals, not recipes. I used to have so many recipes I wanted to make. In fact, on my Pinterest board, I probably have 10,000 recipes, but it's too many moving parts. And then making it simple like this, it allows you to change the flavor based on your mood with food, especially for those picky eaters. And so if you made it like this, maybe one of your kids, or maybe you prefer it with barbecue sauce, which is what I'm gonna do today, some G Hughes sugar free on a healthy life bun. Maybe someone else wants it more like a pork taco and you can make it like that. So keep it simple. Find easy, go-to staple foods that take no time at all to prep, that you can have stored in the fridge and you can turn it into a meal in no time. So, I'm gonna go ahead and try this out. See if it is as tender as it looks. Okay. That's good. I'm gonna keep the juices in here too, but I can taste that smokiness from that mesquite rub and it's just slightly sweet. So it's a perfect base and now I'm just gonna have fun adding different sauces or whatever I want to it to make it a complete meal. All right, Paul, let's see your taste test. Oh man, well you can tell it's just falling apart, right? But from what I gather, it's like the way that Diet Dr. Pepper is hitting off that mesquite <laughs> rub. Oh brother, this is taking me to Flavortown. <laughs> But is it good? For real? Very good. How are you gonna have it today as a meal? What are you thinking? I'm just gonna throw some mustard and some Carolina some vinegar and maybe some Carolina sauce. Okay. On a bun or plain? No bun because we're going for a drink later. Oh that's right. Cocktail time. Mm. Okay, so change of plans. My girlfriend is not feeling well, but I still wanted to go out and get a cocktail. So Paul and I decided we're gonna cut out a little bit early today. Well, he's gonna cut out a little bit early from work since I'm home with the boys and we're gonna walk up to this unbelievable cocktail lounge. It's in our little dr town of Dripping Springs. So I still worked in that cocktail. So while they nap and he's actually home for lunch, I'm gonna scoot out. I'm gonna get my steps in. I'm gonna get that walk in. I'm still gonna plan out my day of food around that cocktail. And then we're gonna walk up and then enjoy a little Thursday night happy hour together. Okay, so I'm officially having my first meal of the day. It's about 2.45 p.m., which is great because Right now in this cut, the amount of calories that I'm getting for today is 1285, 1,285. And that's not very many, especially when I first started this, I was at like 2,200 calories. So I like to push my calories off during the day to make sure that when I have a meal, it's very voluminous and a little bit higher calorie to fill me up. So I only had creamer this morning. So I had two tablespoons, a half and half, so about 40 calories. So I'm only 40 calories in. And I just made this deliciousness. So I wanted to show you how I took one of our staple foods, like our favorite things, our 96.4 lean ground beef burgers. So we actually made these last night now, usually I would eat this on a bun, but I'm saving most of my carbohydrates to have the cocktail later, and I still want dessert when I get home. So I've got my burger, and I did it on top of more protein. So remember, I'm trying to hit my protein goal, and I'm trying to stay in my calorie window of 1,285. So I've got the burger in here, which is a six ounce burger, so super high protein with that. And then I did it on top of an egg white scrambler. So I did about 150 grams of egg whites. I did like 200 grams of zucchini, which is super low carb and it's gonna fill you up. You get a lot of bang for your buck. And I did 80 grams of spinach. Now I topped it with a little bit of G Hughes sweet and spicy barbecue sauce. If you haven't put barbecue sauce on your eggs, you're missing out. It is a really good, like different flavor profile so you don't just get bored eating egg whites. So this meal, as a complete meal, let me tell you this, is only 
340 calories and that's for that entire bowl and now I still have plenty of room later to have my cocktail to have my dinner to have my desserts and the macros on this were 57 grams of protein eight fat and only 10 carbs and so with only having 80 grams carbs to play with I did really good with this meal and if you're also someone who has trouble getting protein in that's about six ounces. So one six ounce patty is about 36 grams protein. So it's a great way to layer protein on protein. And then last thing I wanna show you, cause a lot of people are like, I don't like, you know, to reheat my meat and stuff like that. So these are 96 four lean ground beef burgers. There is not a lot of fat in them, which Paul and I don't mind cause he has mastered grilling these things. Now I just reheated this in the microwave for over a minute and look at this, okay. Still see the pink in there. This thing is not dry at all and I reheated it. So it makes leftovers super enjoyable when you find ways to make your protein that reheat really nice on the stove or in the microwave. So it's nice and palatable and enjoyable to eat. So let's see how this combo is. I forgot to mention, I also threw on some Chipotle Tabasco and some fresh cilantro. I'm a big fan of spicy on spicy on spicy. Okay, here we go. Pretty good. Honestly, a burger on top of an omelet is not a bad way to go. All right, that's an easy meal for you. Super high in protein and really simple to throw together. So I get asked a lot, how much water should you drink in a day? So, you know, how, how much hydration should you be having? I like to get people up to a gallon a day, which is 128 ounces of water. If you are just starting to drink water though, it's gonna be a little challenging. And so I would start with maybe half your body weight in ounces is a good place to start or just track how much you're having and then just in keep increasing from there. Now, sometimes though, I get bored with water. And so I like to add in the mix some Italian sparkling mineral water. This one's a local one from our grocery store, H-E-B. But I mean, you could do um, Topo Chico, you can do like a LaCroix, a Waterloo, whatever you're feeling. But if I don't wanna just have that plain as is, which is good. I like to add crystal light to it. So I put a little bit of powdered crystal light. So I add, the reason it's dark is I added some grape in here and this is 33 ounces. So I already drank 120 ounces plain water. Now I'm having something a little bit more fun to get even more hydrated because it's hot in Texas. Time for happy hour. Okay, so we worked the day out. I'm getting my cocktail right now. And I'm going with this one, the Dusty Bottoms. It looks so good. It has that smoky mezcal in it, some chili liqueur, pineapple lime. It's gonna be tasty. Okay, just got this cocktail. OMG, is it good? Tripping Spring, friend. This is the summer cocktail menu. It's a little bit spicy, a little not too sweet, and it's just got this nice little smoky, like, aftertaste. But, <laughs> Oh, it's pretty busy, so I better go follow a twin. Butterfly? What? Yeah, Lars, what is that? Butterfly. Paul, how's your cocktail? Oh my God, is it almost gone? It was, I was thirsty. What is it? It is a paper plane. Every time I go to a cocktail lounge, I like look at the menu and I'm like, oh, that looks good, that looks good, that looks good. And then I just end up eating a Manhattan. But today, or actually on Saturday when Steve was here, I looked at the, the menu and I would, went out of my comfort zone. I got a paper plane and it's amazing. Now he's gonna go get a baby. He's on the boat. Okay, I'm all end of the day mommed up right now. I am a big creature of habit. Now the boys are only two years old and eventually I wanna do family dinners. Right now it's just a little bit hectic when we get home from daycare or it's the end of the day so I just try to feed them and then I wait till they're, you know, in the cribs to make my dinner. I don't know, there's something about it. I'm finally relaxed, I can let my mind go from the day. I generally save a lot of calories for dinner because it's like my favorite meal of the day. So. You're seeing me in my total ritual. As Soon as they're down, I get in that shower. Most likely it's a body shower since I don't like washing my hair except for every four days. 
I get myself in my pajamas and then it's time for dinner. So let me show you what I'm making. All right, we got home from having our cocktails and I'm gonna finish up my calories for the day. Now, I got a little bit snacky earlier with some of the baby snacks. So I was gonna have a whole bun, but I only have room for half of one, but that's okay. I'm still gonna have the taste of it. So I'm doing an 80 calorie healthy life bun. Love these. 80 calories for a bun, but I'm only doing half of it. And then I'm taking that pork tenderloin that we made earlier, and I'm gonna do 150 grams of that. And I mix some G. Hughes Sweet Heat Vinegar uh, barbecue sauce on it. So I'm just gonna do a little open face one. And then I think what I'm gonna do is throw on some dill pickles. I think that'll be a nice little compliment to it. And then for dessert, because I'm sure, remember, I'm trying to hit my protein. Even though my macros got dropped down to 80 grams carbs, 45 fat, and 140 grams protein, I'm really strategically hitting that protein and staying in my calories. So my carbs ended up being over 80 slightly because the cocktails were delicious and I got snappy, but I'm still gonna hit my protein. And I think I might be 50 calories over, but the whole point of doing any type of plan when you ask me when it comes to nutrition is if the goal is to lose weight or to get leaner, you still wanna find a plan you can enjoy. And so, am I perfect all the time? No, I'm realistic. But today, the most important thing was going out and having that cocktail and enjoying the beautiful weather of summer in Texas, still working in my dessert, still hitting my protein. So I'm gonna finish off with the protein blizzard. If you missed this recipe, you have to go check out my protein blizzard episode. I walk you through how to do this. So I'm having a strawberry cheesecake, PE science blizzard. I mix some raspberry jello in with it. I'm adding PB fit on the top and I'm gonna finish with some mini chocolate chips. And then I still have room for two cookies for after that. So I'm gonna do these little chocolate chip ones I like from the local grocery store. And I was able to fit all of that in with only 1,285 calories. So yes, you have to eat less to lose weight, but you can still make it super enjoyable just by making some substitutions and trade-offs. So I originally built in zucchini. I'm not having it because I had pirate's booty and veggie straws instead. So I'm still having my pork with the barbecue. I'm gonna have my blizzard with two cookies. And that's how I make it work. And so if you're wondering like, hey, like, I just wanna find a plan that's sustainable and enjoyable. Just make sure you build in something every single day to enjoy, whether it is a drink, or it's a sweet, or it's a chip, whatever it is, it's gonna make staying on plan super easy. So that's all I got for today, guys. That's how I fit in these macros on a fat loss phase. Did a little meal prep, had some fun with the boys, and now I'm gonna go watch a show with Paul and, and call, it a, call it a day. All right, thanks for joining me. I'll see you on the next one. He wants but to hit the button. He wants to hit the button. Okay, in one second. All right, let's show him what seasoning we're using today. 